Does anybody have any questions before we go? I have a bit of a headache again. Hopefully it's like all okay here today, but I mean, <clears throat> so uh, if I remember my thing. We were talking Tuesday about looking at somebody's how much enjoyment, usefulness, satisfaction they would get out of a product. And so we and we measured that using this fake word called utility, right? And as if you could give points to your level of enjoyment, but if you theoretically could, then what you would normally see would be situations like this. The more soda you drink, the less enjoyment you would get out of each soda. The first one tastes great, the second one tastes pretty good, the third one tastes okay, what? Why are you laughing at me? Did that do something wrong? Oh no, I was just thinking Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, the first one, not so much. Fifth one might make you start eating. The sixth one starts making you get, feel, feel bad, all right? So, um, and naturally, the less enjoyment that you would get out of something, the less you'd be willing to pay for it. Um, so we see that, but then we were talking about total utility, which is how much utility or enjoyment would you get for the day for all of these sodas you drank in the day? If, who is this person? Was it Matt? Or did it made up person? Okay. If Matt, yeah, if he ended up drinking three sodas, you know, he got 25 enjoyment out of the first one, 20 out of the second one, 12 out of the third one, that would give him a total of 57 enjoyment points for the day. So that's how you would add that up. And then, reviewing in case I forgot. Uh, then we got to talking about, well, let's assume right now these are the only two things that Matt buys. So does the pizza. So then we were like, if money was an issue, what would he do? He would drink four sodas a day, eat five slices of pizza a day. So he would end up spending $9. Even if money isn't an issue, money is still an issue. If Matt's last name was Gates or Buffett or Bezos or something, he still wouldn't spend more than nine dollars because otherwise that's getting irrational. Spending money for something that does nothing for you, spending money for something that makes you sick, we wouldn't do that. So the most that Matt would spend on sodas and pizza would be nine dollars. I don't think I mentioned that one the other day, but, right? Y'all see? Y'all agree? I was there. So the most he would spend is nine dollars. But the most he would do is four sodas and five pizzas. But what happens if Matt does not have nine dollars in his pocket? Well, the hard way was you just sit there and ask how many dollars do you have, and then you start trying to figure out okay, six. He's got six dollars. So what combination of sodas and pizza would get him the most enjoyment? In the fast way that we tied a bow on this at the end of class yesterday, he's just sort of quote unquote spend the dollars one at a time. So the first dollar you would spend on that first slice of pizza, the second dollar would go to the second slice of pizza, the third one goes to the, the first soda, the fourth one, or the fifth one goes to the third pizza, second soda, the sixth dollar would go there. If you had another dollar, if you found a dollar in the couch cushion, well, you would end up spending it here, right? And you just sort of work your way down. So then, what will happen on the test is I'll give you a question that looks like this without the number sort of over. I'll give you a question that looks like this, the chart that looks like the thing that looks like this. Now I'm going to say, if Matt had three dollars, what would he do? What would he do? Two pieces. Two pieces and one soda. If you had five dollars, what would he do? Three pieces. Three pieces and two sodas. If he had one dollar, what would he do? One piece and no so, right? So there will be a problem that looks like this. This is kind of what the homework problems look like. Have y'all done the homework? I do. Have y'all done any of the homeworks? Have y'all done all of the homeworks? So you got three, four homework problem sets are now available to you. And remember, it's, it's homework grade, and you can do it multiple times. Make it happen. But there's only three modules available, right? Yes. Right now, there's only three modules, and each of those has homework, and then we've got one later chapter, a chapter of way that will have a fourth one. Test is next Thursday, isn't it?
which yeah, very very first next Thursday. Um, I'm not going to promise anything, but I think when we finish this chapter today, it's going to be where the test material is going to cut off. I'm not sure. I reserve the right to carry on. So, we can, for you visual learners, do something that's called an indifference curve. What does the word indifference mean? You're indifferent to somebody's plight, you're indifferent to their You don't care. So, you don't care, it doesn't matter to you. So, we can do an indifference curve that shows a different combination of soda than pizza that would give Matt the exact same enjoyment. If there's two combinations that will give him the same enjoyment, well, he doesn't care. As long as he eats one of the two, he's going to be the heaviest, right? So, an indifference curve is going to be a graph showing different combinations that will give him the same enjoyment. I'm made up of utes, utils, you you, you pick your economic textbook, utility points, enjoyment points, whatever you want to call it. Um, this particular textbook that I was using when I actually made these slides before util and I just ran with it. Okay, so I just never changed it. But you can see the different combinations of sodas and pizza that would give Matthew the same level of joy. Say only. If these numbers are not going to agree with what was on the last chart, just dining that good graphing, okay? So let's just don't need anybody coming up. What is coming? Just pretend like it does. These are the different combinations. Theoretically, if he was to drink two sodas and one pizza, that would give him 50 enjoyment points. Theoretically, if he drank one soda and two and one third pizzas, that would give him the same enjoyment. Let's say if I could sell him a third of a pizza. By a slice. Well, I mean, sort of slice. That's what I'm oh, using oh. word pizza and slice interchangeably here. So, okay, technically, one soda and two and a third slices will give you the same enjoyment, but is that really achievable in reality? No. But technically, yeah, if he could get a couple, you know, eat, buy his one soda, two slices, and then when you're not looking, take a couple bites out of your slice, and he's going to be you know, to the enjoyment point. Right? Theoretically, he could. Three sodas and one bite out of pizza would also give them that same amount of enjoyment. I don't know, somewhere down here, like six soda, six pizzas and no soda whatsoever, it's going to give them the same amount. Of, these are the different combinations that would give him 50 points of joy. What is it going to take for him to get more than 50 points of joy? Joy? Joy. Sure, that's like 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 Superman's father, right? Sure. Yeah, actually, it is. Isn't it? Yeah, drink four sodas in one piece. Yeah, one. Yeah, house. ultimately, more sodas and more pizza will give him more joy, right? So you know, if you to get a hundred joy points, like three pizzas and two, I mean, three sodas and two pizzas would get him a hundred points. So, you know, there you go. Um, let's see, I don't know what pizza, I mean, what soda and nine pizzas would I give him 100 enjoyment points? More gets you more, right? And then, so you possibility, and, okay. What would it take for him to get 150 points of joy by eating pizza and drinking sodas? Well, if he could get all two, two and two thirds slices of pizza and six sodas, that would get him there. If you could get to like three sodas and three and three quarter pieces, that would get in there. One soda and, well, okay. It would take more than just a soda, no matter what, apparently. Oh. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, the dignity. So you able to remember what's his name from Alice? The thing you do. wait till y'all have kids. It will utterly ruin you. Well, I mean, we're winning in a good way, let me say that, but. Uh, you know, I know, I, I, growing up, when I was the old age, I'm like, I utterly, absolutely hate musicals. Because who, I don't know, walking down the street just breaks into song. Uh, when you're to house with the kids, 
next thing you know, somebody says something inspired, some song pops in your mind, and next thing you know, you're rolling us. Utterly, kids. Turn me down. Just whatever your life is, it's drawn out of edge of sketch, and kids get shaken. And not shaking the way James Bond's martini is shaken. It's I uh, eight point something on a Richter scale and uh, getting married and doing similar damage. Okay, so okay, he, you know, if he was uh, two sodas, seven slices of pizza, that will give him 150 enjoyment points. Is there any value in looking at this? So, okay, so maybe theoretically, technically, you got all these points, but you could sort of theoretically, you could say, okay, well, six. Nobody's gonna tell me two thirds of the pizza. Okay, well, maybe that combination will do it. Maybe this combination will do it, and maybe I can actually buy that combination of sodas. The rest of them are just hypothetical because he's gonna buy. Who's gonna let me buy a third of a soda and two thirds of a slice of pizza? Right. But there you go. Otherwise, just standing on its own. There is one kind, one way that this becomes beneficial. What would it be? If you put money into the equation, if this, this, and this will each make you the same level of happy, then you can ask, well, how much would it cost me to make that happen? How much would it cost me to make that happen? How much would it cost me to make that happen? And what do you do? You do the cheapest of the three, right? Because you don't care because it's going to be equally happening. Five sodas and two pieces make you just as happy as two sodas and five pieces. So which is cheaper? Right? Because I'll be just as happy. So. What we do is we take the difference curve and we put it together with the budget line. How much money you have to work with. So ultimately, the budget line is going to show, given the amount of money that Matt has in his pocket, how many slices of pizza could he buy, how many can he afford to buy, how many sodas can he afford to buy. And we can look at those different combinations. And then ultimately, we try to figure out with the money he has, what is the combination that he can spend that will get him the most joy? So, the budget line, in the case of a dollar soda and a dollar slice, the budget line is just going to look like this. 45 degree line. Four, if he only had four dollars, he could buy four pizzas and no sodas. He could buy four sodas and no pizzas. He could buy two sodas and two pizzas. He could buy three sodas and one pizza. All right. Technically, okay. he could buy, could he buy three and a half sodas and a half pizza? Not at a moment in time, but if this is averaged out over the course of the week, or in the course of a month, maybe some days he's going to eat four sodas and no pizzas. Maybe some days he's going to drink three sodas and one pizza, so that would average out to three and a half sodas right, a day. If he does three one day for the other, that would average out to three and a half so this is, So those points in between, especially when you're talking money is this part of it, those points in between can actually exist. And technically for the indifference curve, those points in between exist too, because some days you may get deep five slices, some days you may only eat four. So what are the different combinations? If he's got five dollars, it's gonna look like this. If he's got nine dollars, it's gonna look like that. If he's you know, Warren Buffett, way out there somewhere. Right. So with this, you mean with the line, we actually spend all the money. Yeah, have. this would be how, what can you get spending all the money you have. Of course, and I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself, but just for fun, if the price changes, it changes what this looks like. What if soda say a dollar, but pizzas drop to 50 cents a piece? Well, suddenly, the four dollar pizza line uh, felt that line would look like that. Four dollars for eating four sodas, but at fifty cents a piece, four dollars would give up to eight slices. Right. So as prices change, 
the budget line changes. Matt only has four dollars. He, he had four dollars in his pocket. The price change. He still has four dollars in his pocket, but it changes the, the combinations, the amounts that he can buy. Because and we will talk about this at the end of the Econ Tool One. Okay, pizza gets cheaper. If so you can take all that savings and say, pizza's cheaper. I'm going to buy twice as much pizza. Or is some, you can take some of the money that he gets from buying the pizza, from cheaper pizza, and use it to help him get more soda as well. I don't remember that from last semester, because we were in here last month. Yeah. There. So you can see the different combinations. So these lines will change as the prices of the products change. Just like the indifference curve. I don't break things. The indifference curve will change as the product is our our demand, which is determinants of demand, changes. What if you found out tomorrow that I don't know eating pizza causes cancer? Right? That's gonna change between difference curve looks like. There's suddenly there's like no activity out here. How much joy are you gonna need out of her? I mean you're, you're not going to be eating pizza, right? So your different curves will look like that, flat. You're going to get the same joy out of two sodas if you get with two sodas because you ain't eating any pizza, right? These things can change because there's the nervous information. But what we do is we put two and two together. And we say, okay, Matt has $4 in his pocket. So he can buy those different combinations of 0 and 4, 1 and 3, 32 and 2, 31, 4, 0, right? So which of those combinations is going to get him the most utility, the most bang for his buck, get him out on the farthest out in different curve that there is? So visually speaking, this is what we do. Okay, if he's got $6, you put that $6 budget line on the same graph with the indifference curve, and you can see, well, he could spend that six dollars and get himself fifty points of enjoyment by buying nothing but pizza, right? He could spend that same six dollars and buy four and a half, four and three quarter slices of pizza and get in one and a half sodas. He could get him to spend that same six dollars to get a hundred points of enjoyment, or if he does this combination. He can spend that same six dollars, give himself 150 points of joy. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I hope. I hope she yeah, I'll say but, but that's what you do. So, which should he do? Should he do this for the six dollars, this for the six dollars, or this for the six dollars? That one. Because that's going to give him the most enjoyment that he can get out of that six dollars. Visually. That's what we did. Oh, and the other thing about the indifference curves, you can change the indifference curve. It's like your indifference curve for eating the second pack of M&Ms is going to be different than your indifference curves if you have not already had M&Ms for the day. If you've already eaten five packs of M&Ms for the day, then a third, uh, what is that, five packs? If you're going to eat five packs of M&M's today, eating six pack ain't going to really do a whole lot for you, right? So if put the pass behind you, there's going to be suddenly a whole lot more stuff in that sink machine at the end of the hallway that's going to give you more joy than that six pack of M&M's would, right? So the difference curve, the combination between the Snickers and the M&M's is different now than it was before. It's different between that and the three musketeers, that and the zero bar, that and I can have these things will change. But ultimately, since Matt has been taking an economics class and he's going to sit there some weekend, he's going to be bored and he's going to call up an Excel spreadsheet and he's going to think about all of the stuff in his life and he's going to assign point values to them. And then he's going to be able to use that as tools that he can look at his financial situation and figure out, well, when I go to the store, what can I, how can I spend my money in a way that's going to give us the most Give me the most happiness that I can get. Y'all know man's going to do that, right? But we kind of do that. We kind of informally do that. When you go to the grocery store and you sit there looking at, well, I get some Doritos, I, I, I get some Doritos, I get some Three Musketeers, I can get some Cheetos, I get some Dr. Pepper, I can get some what? And you're starting to make a copy, making a choice. 
you know, even though M&M's your favorite, well, you put other stuff besides just M&M's into the cart, right? And you don't put more in that shopping cart than you can afford to pay for it, right? But then you never leave the grocery store with any cash left in your pocket, right? You know, you are. Okay, maybe instead of taking out the word grocery store, you got to put it like Best Buy or something like that. So we, we really, without the numbers, psychologically, we do this. This is another one of the things, y'all know somewhere along the line, somebody told you, did y'all do physics in your mind when somebody throws a baseball through you? You actually somehow, your brain is automatically doing physics to figure out where you got to get your arm in order to catch the ball. Your brain somehow automatically doing the physics when you're going to throw it back to know where the release point is, how hard you got to throw it, and all that stuff in order to throw it. Your brain is automatically doing physics without actually doing the physics, right? Same thing. You doing the math without doing the math, just instinct, instinctively. I don't know what that word. Okay. So all I'm doing here is giving you a sort of numerical representation of the thinking that we already do. Now let's, uh, I, let me go backwards before I go, okay, okay. Just for the fun of it, if you sort of put the two and two together, you're going to kind of see the range of combinations is going to be somewhere in the middle about what you're actually going to do. Because it's going to cost you less money to get here than it would be here or here. It's going to cost you less money to be here than it would be here or here. So in reality, what are we generally doing? Yep, yeah, we could play up here. We could play down here. But where do we play? Somewhere in this path here in middle. Right. And what does that path give us? Relatively, kind of. Even combinations, just in this oversimplified example, relatively even combinations of your pieces. I mean, pizza and so. Um, human beings like variety. We like variety. We will go nuts if we're eating pizza, 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 pizza occasional soda, pizza, 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 we tend to like variety, we tend to go for variety, so things are going to, maybe they get it completely even out, maybe you're on a path where you eat five packs of peanut M&M's before you eat one pack of plain M&M's, but that's kind of the path you can be somewhere in the middle. You're not going to be like 2,000 M&M's versus peanut M&M's versus one plain, somewhere along the line, we tend toward variety, and it's especially for, for things that we like. Now, Brussels sprouts, everybody but Will, we're on a different plane there, right? When it comes to Brussels sprouts and M&M's or Brussels sprouts and anything, most of us are down there somewhere because Brussels sprouts are nasty. But anyway. So. Okay. For any of you econs who are one survivors having a flashback from that last 30 seconds, what are you flashing back to? Remember, for those of y'all that were impaired, we did the thing about the bananas, coconuts on the island out in the Pacific. I'm trying to bring back thank you, the rest of y'all. So, okay, so we did that. So, increased incomes is going to allow us to move to a new indifference curve. The best in that current situation that Matthew was in, the best you could get to was 150 points. Because I was the best combination of spending his money. But guess what? If he has more than six dollars, well, he can buy even more pizza, buy even more sodas, and that will give him even more joy than he was before. So that's what incomes do for us. They move us to a higher indifference curve, give us more joy. Of course, remember I'm keeping whole things simple because it's more in reality we have more than we brought it. I already talked about this. When our demand changes, the shape of those indifference curves change. So the combinations of products that we choose is going to change as well. Um, this would be an example of something, in this case, where the curve used to be down here more. It shifted to where we're showing more favoritism for sodas. 
Maybe news came out that said that drinking soda not only quenches your thirst, but drinking soda makes you smarter too. That's going to make the combination make us go for more sodas and less pizza. Because the way we feel about the product change. Maybe instead of it being drinking more sodas makes you, what did I say, smarter? We'll go with that. Uh, maybe the news was eating pizza makes your teeth fall out. So that's going to slow you down on getting eating pizza to make you eat, drink more sodas instead. Oh, that's why. Okay. I'm like, what's that definition of insanity when you keep saying things over and over and over again expecting a different result and you hope you did it? So if you just call me insane, what would you do? 